Hi, I'm Peter from Coffee Parts, and today we're looking at Ranchilia's latest grinder, the Ranchilia Stile. Now this grinder is a 58mm flat burr grinder running at 1200 RPM with a 300 gram hopper that's been designed to go from espresso to filter and used in both homes and cafes. In many ways it's an evolution of the Rocky which is now famous Ranchilia home grinder but it's a really big evolution from the Rocky. So it's actually quite interesting that Ranchilla released a grind on demand grinder versus a single dose grinder. Now single dose grinders are the latest raves online. Everyone's talking about them and they are really popular, especially in the specialist coffee community. But when it comes to sales figures, we've noticed internally the biggest sellers still are grind on demand grinders. And it makes sense to me because when you look at a broader market, these grinders are very simple to use, make sense, and are just there for what you want to do in the morning. You've got your coffee in it already, you put in your porter filter, you've already dialed in your grind adjustment and your time. So it just grinds that coffee. It's relatively accurate. In this case, we've got a variance of 0.5 of a gram, which is a bit much for the speciality world. For grinders of this caliber is on point. You grind your coffee, you make your coffee, and you're happy. Now, I presume Ranchilio would have access to even larger sales figures than what we do, and would have seen the same trend. So, as much as we're asked all the time about single dose grinders and to compare them, our bigger sellers are grind on the man grinders. So I feel like Ranchilio has nailed it re releasing this grinder now. When it comes to this grinder, they've done some quite interesting things. Little things, yet interesting, which you don't notice at first sight. One of the simple things is this hopper lid. When you remove the hopper lid, it actually also is a grinds catcher. So you now have it so it catches your grinds, easy to shake off the grinds, and when you're not using the grinder, it's back to being a hopper lid. Super simple, yet really cool. When it comes to the hopper, this square design has a shut off here. So when you close the hopper, you can easily remove the hopper. You can place it down and it just sits on the bench. This is really awesome when you want to clean something. A lot of the times you lift a hopper and it's just got the small hopper neck and it wants to fall. You need to hold it and try to do things. It's quite hard to multitask. So this is really cool. As it's only removable when you've got the hopper neck shut, you won't drop any beans out on the counter by accident. When you do remove the hopper, it's got a micro switch here on the rear. So the grinder will deactivate. You cannot actually run the grinder while the hopper is removed. And that's a safety mechanism. So when you put it all together, although it's a simple thing to hopper, it's really neat. Using the hopper lid as a grounds catcher, the shut off to be able to remove the hopper so you're never gonna spill beans, the hopper to be able to sit flat on the bench and to have a micro switch for safety. It's only a hopper, but they've nailed it. Putting it back in, and opening back that neck of the hopper, we now go into the menu or the GUI. Now, to me, this GUI looks familiar with a few other grinders, but it is a very simple to use. You've got two pre-programmed times, either single or double, and you can activate it either by the touch screen or by the micro switch here. So you can go from one to the other just by holding these two buttons, letting it flash, and then your activation moves. When you are running by the activation of the micro switch, there's two ways to run it. Either start and stop as many times as you like, or you can go back into your pre-programmed time and it starts and stops as the time counts down. Now the reason you might stop it once, twice, multiple times along the way is to be able to collapse your coffee. Generally speaking, if you really want to be overdosing those baskets, it's a really useful feature. So grind your coffee, pause it, collapse, keep going. Now going back into the method that's run by the screen, you just hold it down and as it flashes three times, it moves between methods. You got your single double or grind on demand based on the screen. Now you can press the double or the single, be mindful when you do press it's obviously gonna grind. You can press it and you can pause it along the way. If you wanna reset that time, just hit the double or the single again and it goes back to the original time. When it comes to dialing in the grinder, you got your adjustments here on the side. It doesn't matter which side you're adjusting as it's just a dial that runs around. Obviously coarser to finer. It is a stepped grinder and you do have audible notches between each step. The steps are really tight so you can easily move around the espresso range without any difficulty. This grinder is designed to do both espresso all the way through to filter. Yet, although it can do both, it's not a grinder that easily jumps between the two. What I mean by that, when you 
Doing espresso, you've got your grinder quite on a fine setting. To go all the way to a coarser filter setting, in this case it's about 80 notches. And that's easy to go coarser because you're opening up the blades. But when you want to go back from filter to espresso, you're tightening up the blades. So whether it be this grinder or any grinder of this sort that has a hopper and beans in there, as you're tightening the blades, you've got to be running the grinder. So you're going to use a bit of coffee moving from filter back to espresso. Not only that, as you move from one to the other, you're gonna be using a different method here. For espresso, more than likely grinding into a quarter filter. Here, when you're doing filter coffee, you're gonna be grinding into a catchment cup. And to go from a porter filter to a catchment cup, you need to remove this support, which is easy, but does involve a tool. So it's not something that you can just go, oh, let's have an espresso now, let's have a filter coffee and back to espresso. And that's presuming in using the same beans. If you are gonna be doing something like that, a single dose grind, that really does make a lot more sense. But it is nice that this grinder does do both espresso and filter well. If you really wanted to do filter, just say for a few days or a moment in time, you can do it. It is possible and it does grind really well for both espresso and filter, but it's not a grinder you would want to bounce between the two. I would generally recommend having this grinder more than likely for espresso and having a filter orientated grinder. Think of like a fellow Ode as a filter specific grinder. But if you do want to use it for two things, constantly, then this is not the grinder for you. As we move through, another thing that's really cool on this grinder, once again, very small, and I mentioned on other videos, I feel like I'm the only person that mentions this, is the way the power cable comes out of the grinder. It comes out from the bottom, and the grinder's on four little feet, so it's easy to move the power cable, just say to the side here, to the back, to the other side, and where that's really cool, if you have it say, on a counter, where it's not up against the wall, you might want the back really clean for that beautiful seamless look. You might have the coffee machine next to it depending on which side the machine is. Generally, you're gonna have the grinder on the opposite side to the steam arm. And that means you can run the cable across the side under the machine and then use the same cable management or whatever you've done with the machine where it's going through the bench or behind the machine onto a wall or whatever to really keep the cables really neat and tidy. Now, this sounds very small, for me, a machine is not only just about the way it performs, but how it looks and how it makes you feel, how easy it is to use. It's an overall package which makes you feel good about owning it. And these little things, this power cable married up with the convenience of this hopper, really does make this machine quite a nice machine. So overall, I really like the ergonomics of this machine. It's got a small footprint, sits well at home, the hopper's well designed, cable management's well designed, the porter filter support works well. You can use it from either the screen or the micro switch. It really is thought out. But how does it perform in terms of coffee? Let's bring up the machine, make a coffee, and see what the coffee tastes like from an espresso perspective. So moment of truth, let's see this grinder in action. We've got it set to grind out 20 grams of coffee. One thing that's cool is just how consistent this grinder is. The particle size, at least by eyesight, look very evenly distributed. When it comes to the grinder volume, we measured it off camera in the mid 70 decibels, which sits on par with its competitors. Think of the Mechanic X54, Eureka XL, Mazda Mini E, they're all in that mid 70s to high 70, early 80 decibels. So it is a quiet grinder, but on par with the competition. So we've got 20 grams in and we're aiming for 40 grams out. Feels quite balanced and nicely textured. Not too much clarity, but a nice chocolate undertone coming through. And it's relatively what I expected from a 58 mil flat grinder running at these speeds of 1200 RPM. So it is a nice grinder. And one thing to note was is how consistent the particle size was. And it's not being a loud grinder, I think it appeals to more people. 
This is Ranchile's latest grinder, but I'm curious to know which other grind on the man grinder would you like to see this Ranchile compared to? Let me know in the comments below. And like always, if this video has brought you value, hit that thumbs up, and if you haven't yet, please subscribe. Thank you, and see you on the next video.